welcome back to Mode Bespoke. I'm Atenas, and for today's project, we're going to be working on this Argyle baby blanket. Now, this is an advanced Tunisian crochet project, and you are going to need to know how to work a Tunisian simple stitch as well as a regular return pass. We are going to be working a stranded color work project, which may be a new technique for you. Uh, we have covered it on the channel before, but it hasn't been this big a project. So stick around, we'll learn how to do this, and uh, yeah, let's get started. So here's a look at our completed project. So I wanted to show you guys this first, just so you know what you're getting into, because this is a complicated project. It is a really fun project to crochet though, and you will need a, some of the different materials that you normally use because you are gonna need a liner. So this is different than a lot of the other blankets I have crocheted, because this is the back of the blanket, so it's you can see all of the threads kind of hanging out in the back. You will need to cover those, so you are gonna need to get a piece of fabric that is about the size of the blanket that you want to crochet. Now next week, I will be posting the tutorial for the liner, and that's gonna be its own separate thing, because we are gonna be hand stitching it. However, today we are just gonna make the blanket itself. Now, you will need a chart for this blanket, and the chart is available at, in my shop, and I'll link that down in the description box below. You can also get the full PDF pattern, which includes a chart. So you can get either, you can get the full pattern, or you can just get the chart by it. So blanket measurements. Now, without the border, it measures 24.5 inches by 24 inches. And with the border, so this is, the border is optional, and you can add as wide a border as you want, but for this, specific pattern I made it a square blanket and it is 27 by 27 inches so I will teach you how to resize this blanket in case you want to make this larger than a baby blanket or you want to make it even smaller I'll show you how to resize this at the end of the video and I will also talk about switching your yarn because I used this yarn which you've seen before if you follow my channel this is wool like yarn this is a size one fingering yarn so I used two threads of each color. So here's how thin this yarn is. I used two threads of this beige color, and then I used two threads of the navy to make just a slightly thicker yarn. Now, typically two threads of a fingering yarn is said to be about the size of a DK yarn. I find that this one's more like a sport yarn. So for those of you that don't want to crochet with two threads simultaneously and you would rather just use the one, you can get your favorite uh, sport or DK yarn and use that. And you can use the same hook size as the pattern and then just follow all of the instructions as written. If you're also using a fingering yarn, but it's not this wool-like one, one of these skeins is 678 yards or 620 meters. For those of you that use weight, it is 100 grams just for one of these. I used a total of four. So I used two in beige and then I used two in navy. I didn't use the entire amount. I had a little bit left over. I used the navy to sew on the liner. So you will have a little bit left over. All right, now let's move on to the hook. So the hook, you will need to use a Tunisian Afghan hook. Since I am crocheting a small sample, I'm using my Knit Pal 16 inch hook. If you're gonna be making this blanket, you need at least a 30 inch cord. So this one right here is only 16 inches. Please get something larger. So you need at least the 30 inch cord to make this baby blanket. If you wanna make this blanket larger, then use one of the ones in the 40s or 50 inches. So you can make this in, you know, a size of a throw or any other size that you want. All right, now how to know which hook size to use. Say you are using a worsted yarn, or we'll just use this label as an example. We're using a DK yarn and you're gonna to need to use a four millimeter hook. The label will tell you what hook size to use. So if you switch your yarn to any other weight, use the guide on your yarn label. If you are using this wool-like yarn or any other fingering yarn and you're doubling it up, the label tells me to use a 3.5 millimeter hook. Since I doubled the thread and worked with two of them simultaneously, I also doubled the hook size. So I didn't use a 3.5 millimeter one, I used a seven millimeter hook. So just go with whatever the label tells you to use. All right, so let's get to crocheting. I'm gonna be using a DK yarn, just so it's easier to see. And I'm also gonna be using a four millimeter hook. So I will be crocheting a small sample. I'm not gonna do the whole blanket, but I'm gonna do a two by two. So it's gonna have four repetitions of the chart. That way you learn how to put 
the uh, two of the charts together side by side and then how to stack them to create this argyle pattern. All you really need to learn is how to read the pattern and how to stack it and line it next to each other and then this pattern becomes really simple. So we're going to do that right now. Now let's take a look at the chart. Now this chart has two sets of number here at the bottom and this is the stitch number. The top numbers where it says RH is for right-handed crocheters. The one down here that says LH is for left-handed crocheters. To crochet one rhombus, I guess, or one repetition of this chart, you're gonna need 16 stitches. I'm going to make two. So I'm gonna need 16 plus 16 and then plus one. So the, the multiples here are 16 plus one. So no matter how many rhombi you are crocheting across, just do 16 times the number of rhombuses you want, or rhombi, plus one at the end. So again, 16 times two is 32, plus one, 33. That means my chain needs to be 33 stitches. I think I made that a little bit more complicated than it needed to be, but just remember, 16 plus one. All right, so since this is a bit more advanced, I don't need to teach you how to make your chain. Just start with your slip knot, make the chain in however many stitches you need. So I made a chain of 33 stitches, and we're gonna begin our foundation row. So we're gonna skip the very first stitch of the chain, go into the second one, and we're going to cast on. A regular cast on here too. So we're gonna insert our hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop and just repeat in every one of the stitches of the chain. By the end of this, you should have the same number of loops on your hook as you crochet number of chains. So I should have 33 loops on my hook, and you should have whatever number it is that you decided to chain. Once you have completed your chain, it's gonna look like this. You should have all of your little stitches ready to go, make sure you didn't skip anything, and then you're, be you're ready to begin your return pass. Now, the return pass is the same basic return pass as always, yarn over, pull through one, and then for the rest of these loops, you're gonna uh, yarn over and pull through two. So there's one, two, and then yarn over, pull through two, one, two, and there you go. So regular return pass. So this is the super easy part of everything. We haven't added a second color just yet. We are gonna add it here for row number one. So our foundation row is ready to go. This is gonna be in the dark color of the chart, so it's going to make it a lot easier if you kind of match it this way. So this is going to create these dark stitches. I'm going to add my second color, which is going to be the white, and this one's going to be all of the little white squares. If you chose the opposite color, this is just a small sample, don't worry. Practice with whatever you color you've already cast on, but it'll make it a lot easier if you use your darker color for the dark colors of the, uh, of the chart, and then the lighter color for the light colors of the chart. So let's start working here with our chart and begin with row one, stitch one. As you can see here, our first stitch is a dark stitch, but let me grab a pencil so I can point a little easier. So we had one stitch and then we have seven stitches in white, one in pink, and then seven stitches in white. So that's what we're gonna work on. We're gonna stop right there and then I'll show you how to repeat this same pattern in case you don't have any experience doing this yet. All right, so let me grab my work, and we said it's going to be one stitch in pink. So this first stitch right here, so we're gonna skip the first vertical stitch. You already have that on your hook. Don't worry about it. Go to the second vertical stitch of the row, and that's where we're gonna begin the chart. So it's always gonna begin on that second vertical stitch. So this first one, we skip, go to, go to stitch number two right here. We're going to cast on one Tunisian simple stitch so just grab the loop right here. So insert your hook behind the top loop or the top leg of the stitch, whatever you want to call it. Yarn over and pull up one. And there we go. There's that first stitch of the chart. And now we have to cast on seven in white or in color number two. So I'm going to grab my white yarn. I'm going to leave a nice long tail end. You will weave this in later, but leave it nice and long in case you know you don't want it to fall off your hook as you're crocheting. So we're going to insert our hook into that next vertical stitch, which is going to be the third vertical stitch of the row. So just Tunisian symbol stitch into the third stitch. And you're going to yarn over in the new color. So here's my white. I'm going to pull a loop over my hook. Then I'm going to pull the white loop through the pink loop. So I'm going to cast on in white. So there's my first stitch. I'm going to, I'm not going to cut the, the pink yarn. I'm just going to let it drop and I'm gonna pick up the working yarn, which is a white yarn, and I'm just gonna to continue to cast on the remaining stitches. 
I need to cast on a total of seven. So here we go with six and seven. So once I've cast on my seven loops, so here they are, I'm ready to switch to the pink. And I'm not going to cut the white yarn. You're just gonna let it drop. And then you pick up the pink yarn and you're gonna cast on one in pink. So Tunisian simple stitch, one in pink. Going into the next stitch, we're gonna insert our hook, yarn over and pull up one. We're gonna let the pink yarn drop. We're gonna grab the white yarn and then we have to cast on seven. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we have finished the chart. So as you can see here, we had one pink, seven white, one pink, seven white, and there we go. And now we have to repeat it because I'm going to do a second little argyle rhombus. <laughs> so we're gonna begin here again in stitch one, row one. So now we begin again with one pink stitch. So it's one pink, seven white, one pink, seven white. So we just repeat everything we had just done. All right, so we're gonna begin by picking up the pink yarn again, and we're gonna cast on one in pink. Drop the pink yarn, pick up the white yarn, and cast on seven in white. Oh, make sure you just grab the correct stitch. And there we go. Drop the white yarn, pick up the pink, cast on one. Drop the pink, pick up white, and then cast on seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And the last stitch, this is gonna be your final stitch of the row, you're gonna crochet it here at the very end. It also has to be in white, because remember that we need seven stitches in white. So I'm just gonna insert my hook right here behind both threads that make up the final stitch and cast on one. Once you're all cast on, it's gonna look like this, and then you're going to complete your return pass. Now here is the tricky part on the return pass. So this is why you needed experience with it, because now we have to do color switches that match the loops on our hook. So I'm gonna do the first part of the return pass in white, and then I have to switch to pink for each pink loop. So this is a, if this doesn't make a lot of sense, it will make more sense here in just a minute. So we begin with our return pass, which is just yarn over and pull through one. All right, so the next, what, six white stitches, we're gonna yarn over, pull through two, also using the white yarn. And then we're gonna do our color switch here in just a minute. So when you have your hook, it looks like this. You're gonna have your first two loops. So here's the first one in white. The second one, as you can see, is in pink. So this loop right here. When your second loop is in, different, in a different color, you're gonna switch to that yarn color. So I have to switch to pink. So I'm gonna drop the white yarn, and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through two in pink. Now, our colors are inverted. So now that second loop, right here is in white. We're gonna use whatever color that second loop is. So I'm gonna grab my white yarn, yarn over and pull through two. So I'm just gonna continue using the white yarn until I reach the next pink loop. So here we go, and there we go. So we have two loops right here at the top. So we've got one in white, one in pink. Remember to use the color that the second loop is, so match that second color. So you're gonna yarn over and pull through two in pink. All right, so at this point, I really need to point out that you need to work with a very loose tension. As you can see behind our work, we are leaving long threads. And if you work with a really tight tension and you tighten your stitch, it's going to curl up your work. So it's kind of tighten it up and you're not really gonna have a blanket. You're just gonna have some scrunched up piece of yarn. So make sure you work with really, really loose tension Loosen up if you need to. As you work, you'll get the hang of it. Um, but the first few rows, really pay attention to how tightly you're pulling on that thread. So this is why if you don't have a lot of experience using multiple colors with Tunisian crochet, so doing the stra stranded color work as we're doing today, it's a good idea to do a small swatch. So this is why I'm working a two by two, so you can kind of get a feel for it. Um, and just learn to relax your stitches as you work. So as every time that you switch a color, just make sure you pull on your, on your fabric a little bit and loosen it up. And then you'll get the hang of it a few rows in and then it's gonna be no problem at all. You'll be just fine. But once you've completed your return pass, here you go. This is what it's gonna look like in the front. In the back, it's gonna have some threads right back here, um, but this is gonna be normal. You're gonna see it here throughout the rest of the work. So don't stress out. This is the way it's supposed to look. 
Let's move on to row number two. So for row number two, as you can see, we start with one white stitch, one pink, and then we have five stitches in white, three in pink, five in white, and we end in pink this time. So let's get started. We're gonna begin with a white stitch. So we need to drop the pink yarn, pick up the white yarn, and then we're gonna cast on one stitch in white. So one Tunisian simple stitch. Remember that you always work on that second vertical stitch as the first stitch of the chart. In the next stitch, we have to switch to pink. So we did one white stitch, one pink stitch, and now we have to do five white stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna switch to pink. We have to do three stitches in pink. So here we go with one, two, three. We gotta to switch to white and we gotta do five stitches in white. And then we switch to pink and crochet our last stitch in pink. And there we go. So here is the chart. So it was one white, one pink, and then five white, three pink, five white, one pink. And we begin again. So to complete that second rhombus, we begin back at stitch number two, row number two. So right over on this side. And we just repeat everything we just did. So we start again with one white, one pink, five, three, five, one. So like I said, it's, it's really quite simple. You just have to get the hang of reading the chart and then working your stitches the way the chart indicates. So once you get the hang of that, it's super, super simple. Um, and then keep track of your rows. That is super important because I would lose track of them sometimes and then you get distracted, life happens, uh, and you, can't, you won't be able to find yourself on the chart. So once you're like halfway through the blanket, for whatever reason, you might find yourself somewhere else count your stitches, or not your stitches, your rows. Count your rows and keep track of them. Um, but that's just a little tip there. Hopefully it helps somebody. All right, so we've gotten to the final stitch of the row. We have to switch to pink, so I'm gonna cast on one, and here's that final stitch. It's right here at the end. It looks a little bit different than all your other vertical stitches. Make sure you cast that on in whatever color the chart tells you to. In this case, it was pink, so here we go. Now this return pass is different than the one before because we have one stitch in pink. Fortunately for us, the return pass starts yarn over, pull through one, and that's gonna be in pink. So match this one with whatever color yarn the that one stitch was. So in this case, again, pink. Now we can drop the pink and work in our second color, which is our white one, because as we can see here, that second loop is in white. So we're gonna yarn over, pull through two, in white. So there's one, two, three, and we just continue. Here we go. We got to the next color. So we're going to yarn over and pull through two in pink. And we're going to do the next three stitches in pink, and then we have to switch back to white and do the next five stitches in white. And then right here, we have one white, one, or I'm sorry, one pink, one white, one pink. You're just gonna switch the colors to match that second loop on your hook. So here's the pink one. Now that second loop is white, so we switch to white, yarn over, pull through two, and now it's pink, so we switch back to pink, and then we have white. So just continue working your return pass this way. Um, remember, it's always that second loop on your hook, which will tell you what color to do the yarn over, pull through two in. So I'm gonna stop right here for just a moment to answer a question I get for really frequently. So this is what my third, I think, Stranded Color Work project here on the channel. And a question I get asked, or I got asked several times in the other one, is why I have to switch colors on the return pass. So now if we take a look at our stitches, you can see that little vertical stitch is in pink in this case. And this center one right here, which is the return pass, it, it pokes through so you can see that stitch. If I were to switch and do it in white, all I would see would be the tiny little vertical stitch in pink, which would then make the pattern not as visible. So matching the stitch color and the return pass color will make that, that design really pop. So another question I get asked is why can't I just use both threads and then just yarn over, pull through two with both of them? For the same reason, uh, it's not gonna make your design really pop. So you'll be able to see all of those colors bleed through. 
and it's not going to look as nice and you won't be able to see the the pattern as clearly um, but you do have to constantly also switch the colors so that you can pull that thread all the way back to the beginning of the row otherwise that stranded color work is going to become even longer strands and it's going to be much more difficult to work with so that's yet another reason all right so let's begin row number three together and then i'm going to complete the rest of the design and i will show you how to start again so how to do another row of the argyle pattern so because the rest of this is just following the chart so it's really quite simple pay attention to your color switches and then it's just going to be putting the charts together to create the two separate stripes i guess if you want to call them the rhombus stripes all right so beginning row number three we had to begin with two stitches in white and then we're going to do one in pink so there we go we got the stitch now we're going to do three stitches in white and remember that i am following the chart here so it's three stitches in white and now we're going to do five in pink so it's one two three four and five we're going to switch back to to white and we're going to do three stitches so it's one two three we're going to do one in pink and there we go and we're going to finish with a white stitch there we go and now we've cast on that first repetition of our chart cast on that second repetition do your yarn over and then complete the rest of the chart so go all the way to row 15. Once you complete row 15, I'm going to complete the rest of them here. I will uh, see you again, and then I'll show you how to begin that same design over again so you can stack the Argyle pattern. So let me finish the rest of what is this, row number 4 through 15, and I'll see you again in just a moment. So here's a look at my work now. I've completed rows 1 through 15. This is what your fabric should look like right about this point. Uh, now we're going to complete that second row of argyle or rhombuses and for this let's take a look at our chart so this first row you are going to skip it you're just you're not going to repeat this at all for the rest of the pattern because row number one and row number 15 are exactly the same so from here on out you're going to complete repetitions of row 2 through 15 only not 1 through 15 2 through 15 otherwise you're going to end up with this little section that's going to be it's going to be a rep like a repeated row and it's going to interrupt the argyle pattern so it won't look as nice so beginning on row number two we're going to do row two stitch number one so we're going to cast on one tunisian simple stitch in white and we're going to switch color on the second one now my yarn is no longer pink it's now orange but it is a color switching or color changing yarn so as you can see here's that transition between the pink and orange um so sorry now that pink yarn is orange but we switched and now we're going to do five stitches in white so remember that we are still following our chart here we are going to switch so this would have been pink but now it is orange so we're going to switch to our I don't know, first color and do three stitches in that first color we're going to switch to white and we're going to do five stitches in white so five here oh no here's five and then we switch to our next color which where is it there it is we're going to do our stitch in orange or pink or whatever color you're using and there you go so there's that repetition of the chart so remember that this was row two of the chart we are no longer doing row one once you complete row number 15 you skip back to row number two and begin the design again so everything you did from rows 2 through 15 you're just going to repeat it so all you're basically doing is just adding length to your blanket and you're stacking one argyle pattern over the other so i'll leave you here for a moment i'm going to finish rows 2 through 15 that way i have a second row of argyle and then i will show you how to do the bind off um, before because you need to do a bind off before we can start working on the uh, border so let me complete the rest of these stitches I'll be back here in just a moment to show you that bind off all right so here we go I have completed two stripes I guess of argyle so this is what the fabric would look like once you repeat that uh, row number two through 15 again so you can see there's no breaks in that transition 
uh, between that first repetition of the chart, that first uh, stripe, and the second one. Um, once you have completed the length that you want for your blanket, you have to finish it with a bind off. And what the bind off is going to do is going to close off the stitches at the very top because all of this doesn't have any spacing between the stitches. But if you look at this topmost row, here is that open space. And we want the borders to be the same. So we want the edge along the top of the blanket to kind of match the one at the bottom. So for that, we're going to be using a single crochet bind off. I'm going to be using my first color or the color number one. Whatever color it was you used for that foundation row, that's the color you're going to use for your bind off. Now for the bind off, you're going to cast on a Tunisian simple stitch. So just go into that second vertical stitch and once you have two loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through two. So just a single crochet. We're going to do this in every stitch of the row and you're not going to switch colors anymore. We're just going to keep using that same color we used for the foundation row. So cast on a Tunisian simple stitch. Once you have two loops, yarn over and pull through two. So you'll just be left with one loop on your hook. So we are just closing off all of the open spacing for that final row, creating a nice little edge so that that way our top edge and our bottom edge match. So here is a look at it. And then here's a look at this bottom edge. So that way they're kind of similar. You have a lot of activity going on in the blanket anyway, so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but we want it to kind of match. And that way it's also the same size so that our border is nice and even. So now let's talk about the border real quick. So for those of you that are a lot more advanced and just want to move along, the border is just a single crochet border. So it's very, very simple. You work it in the round. So you're going to do three stitches, so three single crochets in the top corner stitch. So once you finish your bind off, you do three single crochet and then single crochet one along every stitch down the side of your blanket. So just single crochet all the way down. You get to the bottom most corner stitch, you're going to single crochet three and then single crochet one all the way across. For the border, I switched my hook, so I didn't use that 7mm Tunisian hook. I used a 6mm just regular hook. If you don't have a regular hook, a Tunisian hook will work just fine. Just go down a hook size. But I will talk more about this border here in a little bit. Um, something I did want to mention is if you don't want to use this single crochet border, I have a video tutorial. I'll link it down below where I show you how to do uh, four different basic borders because you don't want anything too frilly or it'll distract from the argyle pattern. So it's four basic blanket borders. The single crochet is one of those four borders, so I'll teach you three other ones, <laughs> but um, you can use any of those borders if you prefer. But once you reach here, this very last stitch of the row, so this is the final stitch for the bind off, you're going to single crochet three into that final stitch. So here you go. So here's one, two, and three stitches. And this is gonna create the turn. Once you've created the turn, you're going to turn your work sideways, so you're looking at the side of your blanket, and you're going to single crochet into every stitch along the side. So you're going to just insert your hook, yarn over, and then pull up a loop, and yarn over, pull through two. So single crochet into every stitch along the side. When you get to the corner, we're going to single crochet three. So let me just fast forward this here, we're going to get to the corner really quickly. And once you get to the corner stitch, which is right over here, you're going to single crochet three into that one same stitch. So that way you create the, uh, the second corner. And there we go. That'll create that little turn. And now we're going to single crochet one stitch along the bottom edge of the blanket. So I crochet mine between the vertical stitches, just because sometimes this bottom uh, edge is a little bit difficult to see. So I just insert my hook into the space between the vertical stitches and count that as my, as my stitch. So here, let me do, uh, well, I'll show you here what it looks like. So this is, so you kind of get an idea of this spacing, but that's all there's to it. So this, this is the most basic border I could teach you for any blanket. Just single crochet all the way around, single crochet three into every one of the corner stitches. You're going to go around and around until you get the width that you want for your border. So I worked all the way around, and this is, I, I also worked along the top part of the bind off. And I got to that very first corner. So the one that we crocheted three single crochet for, for that very first one that we did, this is where I'm at. So now you're gonna have three stitches in the corner. 
here's the first, second, and third. You're going to do your three single crochets in that second stitch, so in that middle stitch or the centermost stitch. So in this first one, we're going to do one single crochet. In this second one, so the middle stitch, we're going to do our three single crochets. So there's one, two, three, and that's going to give us the turn. So here we go, here's that little corner. And then from here on out, we just single crochet one into every stitch along the side of the blanket until we reach the next corner. At the next corner, we're going to repeat what we just did. So single crochet all the way around here, here's the corner, and here are your three stitches. So single crochet in the first stitch, do three single crochets in the second one, or in the centermost stitch, and then one single crochet in the one after that. So there we go, that's how you're going to work the single crochet border for this blanket. Now, I do get a lot of questions about the border itself, so let's go over some FAQs for just general blanket patterns. Starting with the border, so now if your border, if you see that like this piece right here, it is wavy. If your border is wavy, it means that you have too many stitches or your stitches are too big. So in order to get rid of this wavy edge, you do have to decrease your hook size for the border. So go down one millimeter. So like I said earlier in the video, I did the border using a six millimeter regular hook. Uh, this is going to make your stitches a little bit tighter and it'll it'll remove the waviness from the border. You will have to pull out all of the stitches that you just crocheted for that border. I know it's kind of a big bummer, but it will make your blanket look better, I promise. So pull out those stitches, switch your hook size to a six millimeter or go down a hook size if you used a different hook size, and then do it again. You're going to use that same hook size for the rest of the border, so you don't need to switch again. So I used that same six millimeter hook, did the rest of it. Now, if you have the opposite problem, and instead of your work being wavy, it does like a bubble effect. So here, let me try to pinch this so it bubbles up kind of like this. That means that your stitches are too tight. So that means you need to go up a hook size. So when my work does that, I don't go up automatically one hook size. I do half a hook size. Um, so instead of using a seven millimeter hook, I would try a 7.5 and then I would go to the uh, eight if I needed to, but usually a half uh, millimeter is all it really takes to fix that problem. So moving on to the next frequently asked question when it comes to blankets and borders is how wide do I make my border? Now that one is a personal preference type question. So it really depends on how wide you want the border. For this pattern, I went, I think I created nine rounds. So it was a total of nine rounds and the width for this blanket, I think the width for this border, sorry, it was about an inch and a half. So yeah, that's an inch. Yeah, so it was about an inch and a half, which is just under, I believe it's five centimeters. Um, so, but that's, that's up to you. And it also depends on the width of your yarn. So this is me using the two threads of the fingering yarn. It was nine rounds. If you're using a, a worsted weight or you're using a bulkier yarn, you may not need as many rounds. So just keep count of how many rounds you created for your, your blanket. You can jot that down on your pattern for future use, but it's really a personal preference thing. Now, let's take a look here at the back of our work. So that's the next question that I know I'm going to get here for this project. So this is the back of the work. This is what stranded color work or stranded yarn work looks like. So you're going to have these big long threads of yarn here hanging out in the back. You can't really gift this blanket or use this blanket with all of these strands in the back since they will get caught on stuff and ruin all of the long hours you put into this beautiful project. So you will need a liner. Like I said at the beginning of the video, you are going to need to buy some fabric that uh, you want to use for your liner. I will talk about this in next week's video. So I'll make a video tutorial specifically for this, uh, for how to line a crochet blanket. I teach you how to do this by hand. So I didn't use a machine or anything. I hand stitched this. It's really, really simple. You don't need a lot of supplies. Since I did use a fingering yarn, that's the same yarn I used to sew the liner on. I will also teach you how to do these little stitches in the center. So see these are little crosses. I sewed these onto the liner because I want the liner to stick with the blanket so that if I'm to lift this blanket by the liner for whatever reason, it doesn't move around. And that's not, you don't need to do that for every blanket if you don't want to, but for this specific pattern with the stranded color work, I was afraid that maybe the blanket, like the fabric might snag and then ruin the stitching. So 
I thought I would just do a couple of stitches and then just keep the fabric liner just a little more attached to the blanket. I also am not a big fan of liners when they split apart from the blanket completely and you get this weird balloon-like blanket. I don't really like the look on that. Um, so that's why I added these extra stitches here that you see. I will show you how to do those in the tutorial. In case you've never seen this before, you've never thought to try it, I'll show you how, I'll walk you through. And that way you'll learn how to line a blanket by hand and you'll be able to use it for any of your other crochet or knit projects in the future. So now let's talk about resizing your blanket. So before you resize your blanket, make sure that you use the yarn you want to use for your blanket. So if you're going to use the wool-like yarn, use the wool-like yarn. If you are going to use any other yarn, make your swatch in that yarn. So once you have your swatch, do not make the border. So use this video to practice and kind of get the hang of everything. But when you actually go to make your swatch, don't make the border. Once you complete a two by two little square like this one, or I guess it's really a rectangle, but once you complete the two by two, measure the width and then measure the height. Again, without a border. And then jot those measurements down. Now let's math. Let's say you wanna make a 30 by 30 blanket. Your blanket across is five inches and it is seven inches high. Yes, this does work for centimeters too, guys. All right, so you're gonna take your 30 inches and divide them by that width. It gives us a total of six. So our argyle blanket has two argyles, so it's two argyles by six gives us 12. That means our argyle blanket is going to be 12 little argyles across. So we're gonna do 12 repetitions of our chart. Now we're gonna do the same for the height. So we're gonna do 30 divided by the seven inches gives us 4.3. At this point, you can decide if you wanna round down or round up. I round it down. Two little argyles times four gives us a total of eight argyles. That means I'm going to do eight repetitions of my chart or eight rows or stripes, really, eight stripes of argyle. So my blanket is gonna be 12 across by eight argyles up. That is how you're gonna figure out how many repetitions of your chart you need. Um, but yes, you will have to decide about how big a blanket you want. No, it is not going to be perfect, but it will be pretty close. For the blog post for this pattern, I will list the most commonly used blanket sizes. Uh, remember that this is not gonna be perfect. It's gonna be rectangular. You're gonna, it's gonna be squared off a little bit more when you do the border. Um, but it is gonna be a more rectangular one. I will, however, just list all of those sizes just so you have a reference and you kind of get an idea how, like what different size you can make this blanket. Um, and now let's talk about weight. So in the US, normally you buy your yarn by yard, uh, yeah, you buy your yarn by yardage. Um, at least most of the patterns I've seen will tell you you need this many yards of this weight blanket for X project. That's not applicable in all countries. So some of the countries like in Mexico and Spain and several others, I'm sure you use weight. So they will ask me, like I get frequently asked, how many grams of this yarn did you use? All right, so if you live in one of those countries to determine how many grams or how many ounces of yarn you need, look at your yarn label. So the yarn label will tell you how many grams or how many ounces each ball, hank, skein, whatever of yarn that you want to use. Keep that in mind. So in order to kind of estimate how much how many grams let's go with grams how many grams of yarn you need make your sample so we already talked about the swatch is a four by four and we also already determined how many little argyles or how many little rhombuses we want across and how many we want high so our numbers were 12 and 8 like we just calculated now we have to figure out the weight so we made our swatch now weigh the swatch so you're going to weigh that jot down how much that swatch without the border weighs now we have to determine how many of these little swatches we need to and make. And you're just gonna draw your blanket. So use little X's or however you want. You don't need to be an artist. Just gonna draw it out. How many rhombuses you need to cross, how many you need high, and then circle out or square out the way I have it here in the photo, how many repetitions of that swatch you need. So how many four by fours you need in order to complete the blanket size you, and we, you want. Because since we already weighed that swatch, that is how much weight you're gonna need. So if I need 12 repetitions of my swatch, let's say that my swatch weighed 10 grams to make the math easy, that's gonna be 12 times 10 grams gives me 120 grams. 
This is without a border, so remember to add extra for the border. If the ball of yarn, hank, skein, whatever you're using, isn't very large, just buy another one. It'll be the easiest way to just make sure you have extra yarn for that border. Um, I mean, you could do more math if you wanted to, but at that point, it's a little too complicated and I don't really want to go into it. So calculate how much you need for the blanket itself and then buy one additional ball, hank, skein, whatever you're using of yarn. So let's talk really quickly about the curl at the bottom and top of your work. Don't worry, that completely goes away when you make the border. So if your work has started a curl, it's okay. It'll solve once you fix it, or once you add your, your border and then you're all set. And one last quick note on the chart. So like I told you before, the chart is available uh, on the shop. I'm gonna leave that link down in the description box below. This is the same Argyle chart we have used for three patterns already. So this is pattern number three. We've used it for a hat, we've used it for a scarf, and now we're using it for this blanket. We are also going to use it in, I don't know, maybe like two months or so, I will start posting information about another pattern I'm working on, and that is for this little Argyle sweater. So this one right here is a baby sweater. However, you can make this sweater in any size you want. But we'll talk more about that once I actually start working on um, the pattern and finalizing it and everything. But you're gonna use this chart. So this chart is very helpful. Um, it's not expensive, it's on the website. You can just buy it if you don't wanna buy the whole pattern. Um, but yes, you are gonna see several other patterns using this same chart. Follow me on Instagram to get release date information for this pattern and all of the other patterns that we're gonna be working on. That's gonna be at mode.bespoke. And if you have any questions, you are always welcome to email me. The email address is up on the screen and you can also find it in the description box. If you wanna see more of these types of projects, you can always hit the subscribe button. I try to post as regularly as possible. <laughs> I was posting every week and uh, the, now my patterns are kind of becoming bigger and more complex. So they're a little bit more further apart, but I do post regularly. Um, you can also find all of the patterns that you see here on the channel on my website. That's modebespoke.com. The link is in the description box. You can find the shop patterns and you can also find some of the free patterns available on the blog. I hope that's all I've got for you guys today. I will see you all again next week when we're going to talk about how to line this blanket. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see you then.